My dear brothers and sisters, it is such a pleasure for us to present to you today the topic dealing with domestic violence, No More Silence, End It Now. My name is Dr. Mabel Dunbar and I will be joined with my husband, Dr. Colin Dunbar, to share with you some information about domestic violence. But before we do that, please let's bow our heads in prayer. Father in heaven, we thank you so much that you bless us in so many different ways. We are so thankful that you have brought us together, that we can hear each other, even though we might be many miles away. And we pray that you'll, your spirit will guide and direct in this presentation. May your people be blessed and may you be glorified. Amen. So we're talking about domestic violence. No more silence, end it now. And as we begin, I'd like to share two stories with you. And these are true stories. Tina reported that she grew up in a well-ordered Christian home. Her father was very disappointed, however, that she, being the oldest child, was not a boy. He required her to do heavy chores on their farm. When she was 18 years old, she was raped by the youth leader in her church who came from a similar home environment. Tina became pregnant. Furious, her father kicked and verbally abused her and encouraged her siblings to do likewise. Once he pinched her earlobes with a pair of pliers because she did not hear him calling her. Her mother tried to shield Tina from the abuse, but herself, she was abused. Tina is now a grown woman with children, but she does not understand how her father, a Christian, a church leader, could have abused her. Although she attends church, the memories of her father overshadow her concept of a loving God. Here's another story. In his words, we were Christians. Well, as long as I could remember, my mother was verbally abusive to my father. Then she got physically abusive towards him. Eventually, she started beating me and my sister, but my father did nothing to protect us. Many times, she would leave us in the middle of the night when he was at work. We would call him, and he would send someone to stay with us. We were too small to understand that she was a drug user and sleeping with other men. She left my father many times, but he would always take her back. She finally left for good and has never changed. I wish that my father spent more time protecting me and my sister from my mother than worry about his image in the church. I want no part of being a Christian if you need to be a doormat in order to be one. That story was written or was shared to me by a gentleman named Jim. That's a pseudonym, of course. So what is domestic violence? Domestic violence is a pattern of abusive behaviors in relationships that are used by an individual to gain power and control in that relationship. It can be physical, sexual, emotional, economic, religious, cultural, institutional, or psychological actions or threats of actions that influence another person. This includes behaviors that intimidate, manipulate, humiliate, isolate, frighten, terrorize, coerce, threaten, blame, hurt, injure, or wound someone. Since statistics indicate that men tend to be more physically abusive towards women, my experience, however, has been, as I have observed, that women tend to be more verbally abusive towards men. But for clarity, I will refer to the abuser as he and the victim as she. However, I want everyone to keep in mind that anyone can be an abuser and anyone can be a victim. So let's talk about the directions of abuse. Abuse or domestic violence goes in any direction and it can be directed to anyone. For instance, husband to wife, man to woman, parent to child, child to parent, weak versus the old, rich versus the poor, minister versus congregation, employer to employee, race against race, culture against culture, white against black, black versus white, young versus the elderly, or the educated versus the uneducated. So we might ask the question, why does domestic violence continue? 
It continues because Christians are targets of the enemy and Satan wants to destroy the image of God in us. Everyday individuals are assaulted in their homes through physical, mental, spiritual, sexual, economic, verbal, and emotional abuse. But unfortunately, the Christian community has been slow to address this issue of domestic violence and sexual abuse as sinful acts. In some situations, religion has prevented victims as well as perpetrators from getting the assistance they need in order to end abuse in their homes and communities. At times, the religious community gives negative messages to victims and perpetrators. I will list a few. Marriage is a private affair. A woman should obey her husband. Women are emotional and they tend to exaggerate. There are traditional male and female roles. Keep the family together at all costs. Don't air your dirty linen. Every child needs his father. You need a man. She needs to be taught a lesson to keep her in line. Women are the weaker vessel. As long as he's providing for you, you should stick it out. There are plenty of women who wish they were in you, your shoes and wish they had what you have. You can't make it on your own. What did you do to make him act that way? And if you change, he'll change. Pray about it. God will give you the strength to endure. The unfortunate thing about these messages is that sometimes the message that we think we're giving is not what a victim or perpetrator might hear. For instance, when we say to a victim, pray about it, God will give you the strength to endure. She's probably hearing, if God does not give me the strength to endure, then I am not a good Christian. Or God must, must not be answering my prayer because I don't have the strength to endure. So as we continue, my husband is going to talk about religious communities and how religious communities have used texts out of context to ignore abusive relationships and systems or to condone abuse.